galaxy is burning. Brother fights brother, and treason splits the Imperium of Man. This is the Age of Darkness. Welcome to the Remembrancer's Retreat, coming to you from within the depths of the Vengeful Spirit. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Remembrancer's Retreat, a Warhammer 30k Horus Heresy podcast. My name is Jesse. I'm your Remembrancer number one here. Hi guys, I'm Jason. I'm coming back to the mother cast. It's Austin. Hooray! Question mark? <laughs> That's not a question mark. Hooray! It's good to be loved. It yeah, is. definitely. So, we're here once again after a couple weeks where we got a lot of Horus Heresy content over the past two weeks, it seems like. Yeah, like to the past like 10 days have been wild. Yeah. Finally got another Horus Heresy article in the White Dwarf in the first time in... A good long time, I feel. Yeah. 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 We got another exemplary battle featuring the Iron Warriors, and the Primarch uh, lineup is complete with the Khan. Check Just out Tycon. For, Just in time for the new edition. Just in time. Mark. <laughs> we can only hope. Mm. And he is sexy, I tell you what. He is a very impressive looking and right up there with, along with one of my favorites alongside the Lion. I have to admit, he is pretty gorgeous. Uh, I do have a thing for top knots, so I was instantly <laughs> smitten. Yeah. It's funny, like, the con and the line look very similar, especially with their flowing capes going in the same direction. They yeah. do. They do have the very, uh, very similar dynamism. Yeah. But that being said, Khan is stepping on his own tactical giant piece of wall. So that's kind of neat. Naturally. He is. I do like, too, how the casualties at the base are getting, like, more and more graphic. Like, starting out, you just had Angron, you know, knocking over a couple of dudes. Yeah, it's like, whoa. Yeah. But now you got one that, you know, is, I don't know, like a amateur surgery hour. <laughs> He's been disemboweled. Right. It's like, I'm pretty sure I can all... tell the difference between like the colon and the small intestine in there. <laughs> it's pretty detailed. <laughs> but speaking of detail, like I said, Khan is gorgeous. Awesome sword. He's got that, uh, I don't know what his gun is called anymore. That's an excellent question. Uh, it's very ornate uh, and pirate looking and I love it. Mm -hmm. He's got the white tiger Dao. Um, mm -hmm. oh, it's just, it's straight up just an Archaeotech pistol. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, I don't know. That feels a little anticlimactic, doesn't it? <laughs> for, for a weapon that looks like that? Yeah. Just a bit. Right? It's like, he's got the wildfire panoply, the white tiger Dow, and an Archaeotech uh, pistol. Just, just give him an Archaeotech pistol. Right? He's not that, he's not that into it. Like. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. Really good looking. They really should have had him up like uh, like an old school cavalryman from like the early Black Powder era. Mm. Like, it takes me two minutes to reload this fucker, so I'm just going to carry six of them. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. Just have six one-shot Archaeotech pistols. Yeah. So I know back in the day there was rumors and I guess strong rumors that there were supposed to be either two models or a way that you can swap the con out for a jet bike. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because his legs do look splayed enough to where he can sit him on a jet bike, but I feel like that would be way too goofy. But oh, his yeah. torso, though, depending on the cape, the cape might get in the way, but the torso looks like you just take that off and put it on a jet bike. I am kind of curious how the model itself is sectioned. I've only ever seen it, like, mm -hmm. completed and painted. Yeah. That would be kind of fun if you could just, like, boop, you know, his torso straight off <laughs> his legs. I would say with uh, with the lion, the torso and legs are one piece. Yeah, that's, but like, pretty That being normal. said, yeah. Really curious to see, but whoever yeah. did the paint job too was fantastic. Yeah, because there's there's been a couple of the Primark models that like <laughs> me judging friggin' <laughs> for the heavy metal team um, look better in other schemes. Sure, so we say yeah um, that people were just sort of like oh, that's not a great Primark, and then you see somebody else paint and go, oh damn, I get it. Yeah. Not Angra. this guy. We're talking about Angra. I mean, <laughs> yes, we might be. Mm. Angron was pretty terrible. Um, but this is just beautiful all the way around. Like, it, it's peak con, right? Just, Coming early next year. Uh, so, not quite a Christmas con, but... No, and I kind of wonder how much of that 
it, like I know the last Prime arc also had a pretty large gap between reveal and release. Yeah, I remember the Lion. Good God, it was March, April of 2020. Mm-hmm. You know, nearly two years ago now. Oof. And he showed up. I want to say September, or October of 2020. Mm-hmm. So it was like six months. Yeah, I guess I can't that, do math right now. We kind of thought like, oh, the Rona. Yeah. And I'm now I'm like, oh, is this Brexit? Is that the problem here? Like, or a combination of both. Like, I know they don't have any truck drivers over there right now. Yeah. Can't move the models. Per the interwebs. We'll go. GW, we'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll move some models we'll for you. We'll move some models for you. Yeah. <laughs> Across the tables at Warhammer World. Amen. But yeah, exciting times. So a little sad that they didn't release the uh, pictures of the box set yet, which drive me off the wall crazy, but you know. Honestly, that has me a little concerned. Yeah, it does. Because the math kind of lined up for a Christmas release, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the, oh, you get the leak and everything's going. Okay. But See, I like the I, – I really got to stop, like, going down the Reddit comment hole. Yeah, you do. I, Go ahead. I just really just do. Just, just just one more time. Just one more time. All right. We'll I t- feel take like, a trip. I feel like I need the equivalent of, like, a rehab project for just, like, Reddit comments. Because I'm like, wait, it can't be as dumb as I think it's going to be. But and, <laughs> and, and it never is. It's it's, a, it's a great deal worse than that. Oh yeah, it's never as dumb as I think it's going to be. It's always way worse. Um, I did hear the argument that Games Workshop specifically doesn't target Christmas releases because they have to compete with everything else that people normally buy for Christmas. So they try to aim for releases outside of the normal traditional Christmas release window similar to some video game developers which makes good sense unless you look at literally any of gw's release cycle yeah, like all the box sets i like... prefaced this with saying it was dumber <laughs> than i thought it was going to be just in my own however defense. i will i, I mean we're, we're not blaming you except that you know you've had to suffer by finding this intelligence to bring us bring that a little bit closer there Sorry about right, that. you're good um, no, just slide it. It's fine. But the problem, Breaks. the problem I have with this is that okay, if it was going to be a Christmas release, it, is there another reveal? And you know, it'd have to be kind of like its own weird turkey a heresy reveal. Com- I'm all for it, right? Like, but you're coming up really close. They normally like to build it up for a month or two. Yeah. And it, so, so like, if it was going to be a Christmas release, and then and Windows Brexit slash Rona like got that pushback even by a couple of months. You got to wonder if like, okay, if all the rumors we hear is that this is supposed to be like a flagship product. Yeah. Well, when's the other time flagship products get their new additions? Over the summer. Yep. Yep. And I'm just like, yeah, right at the beginning of the summer. Jesus fuck. If I have to wait (laughs) summer 2022. Yeah. But what a summer would that be? (sighs) Who knows? Boris Johnson's supposed to save Christmas in in, in the UK, so... (laughs) How the Boris saved Christmas. <laughs> it's I nice. didn't vote for him. <laughs> I was about to say, it's nice when someone else's leader is getting made fun of. Uh, anyway, so fingers crossed and keep our eyes peeled. But that being said, again, we had a bunch of heresy stuff. Uh, yeah, they, up here. they've been keeping us happy, you know, the as exempl- happy as nerds ever are. The exemplary battles, I tell you what. That morning, I was like, dude, I really, I'm still pining over, you know, another heresy fix after the con. I was like, I need something. And then pop, <laughs> the uh, new exemplary battle came up. And we had some discussion on this on our chat there a little bit. But here we are. Exemplary battle number three, the siege of Hydra Cordatus, sundering of the Cadmian Citadel. Iron Warriors are the focus. The uh, story uh, involves the uh, Iron Warriors dominator cohort. Being very angsty and being very sad. Like they do. Yeah. And uh, beating the shit out of some Imperial Fists and beating the shit out of uh, basically an Iron Warrior captain who's trying to be very aspirant. It doesn't go very well for the Iron Warrior. Uh, what do they call him? Captain. Yeah, Siege Captain. Uh, yeah, ends up with uh, Perturabo's Domitar just blowing him to bits. And the dom- and the uh, the Dominator cohort looking on at Perturabo like, please, Daddy, bring us home. And Perturabo just walks away. So it's a, it's another very salty story Aww. for the Iron Warriors. There's no happy Iron Warrior story. Look, play, really a, play a Legion whose Primarch loves them. 
Never. <laughs> but that being said, we got a new unit, the Iron Warriors Dominator Cohort. This is a zero to one selection in the elite slot. Yeah, and it's a it's a pretty fun unit, I think. Like, it's not wowing anybody, I don't think. But it's I, I feel that like it didn't really like get me super excited. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, this is a solid pick. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do something different. But uh, we'll go run down through the uh, the details. It's coming at 275 points. It is five Dominators who are all character infantry. They're all in Cataphracty Terminator armor, armed with combi bolters and thunder hammers. Uh, you can take an additional five for 40 points each. So with that, a normal standard Terminator is 30 points. So the thunder hammer is 10 points. So it comes e- evens out a bit. Mm-hmm. That being said, they do have some special stuff. For example... Their weapon skill is five as opposed to four and two attack space. That's the same. So still a one wound terminator, but now we just got a vast majority of one wound terminators these days. Mm -hmm. So don't worry. Strength eight is your friend. Yeah. These guys don't give a shit. (laughs) If the other terminators are two wounds, they got a thunder hammer. Yep. So you can have wasted points. You can have up to 10 of these guys. They have uh, Legion and Sestari's iron warriors. Of course. Uh, Implacable advance. Stubborn, Hatred, Cybernetica Cortex, and those once honored. So can we take a small break and say how hilarious it is that they have Hatred, Cybernetica Cortex? It's great and it's fluffy and I wish we had more stuff like that. We hate robots. They stole our jobs. (laughs) That's effectively it. In the story there talks about a, um, I guess a, uh, oh, what are the, uh, Pravian with like a bunch of castle acts. And it talks about how the Domitar is like, ah, Fuck off. <laughs> Tears. They just, you know, see uh, Perturabo with, with his new uh, girlfriends. Yep. Just hanging weeping out. salt. Yep. <laughs> okay, boomers. Robots are the future. <laughs> <laughs> but they got hatred. So they're re-rolling hits. And wounds are just hits, I think. Just hits. Just in the first hits. round of combat. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep. Still a weird rule. Just make preferred enemy all around. It's... <sighs> just... Okay. So... Just, from a fluff perspective, I think these are spectacular. It makes perfect sense as to why they exist, to why they have the rules they do. Mm-hmm. From a on-the-table perspective, I think it's a really, really difficult argument to make efficiency-wise. Like, and let me just say here, like, if you want to, like, convert a super cool unit of Terminators, pay no attention to me, do what makes you happy. But I don't understand. They feel in a super weird place to justify, because quick math, like, five Terminators with Thunder Hammers are 225. Yeah. So you're essentially paying 50 points here for Stubborn, Hatred, and... Uh, Hatred, cybernetica. Yeah, the hatred um, cybernetica cortex. And what bothers me mm-hmm. is under those once honored, like that's kind of a cool rule. Like, you know, it, when you use them early on, they hang out with Perturabo. Yeah, go ahead and I'll read what those once honored was because we hadn't touched that yet. Oh, yeah, that is a good point for any context whatsoever. A dominator cohort may be chosen instead of a command squad as a bodyguard for Perturabo. If selected in this manner, they count as a retinue unit and do not use a separate force organization slot, but no other retinue unit may be selected for Perturabo. All models in a dominator cohort selected in this manner lose the hatred cybernetica cortex and instead gain the feel no pain six plus special rule. In addition, if an army includes a Dominator cohort selected as a retinue for PERT, the army may not include any Iron Circle Domitar Ferrum class battle automata maniple units. Makes sense. So, again, fluff-wise, perfect sense. Uh, Efficiency, rules, usability on the table, they are all over the place, and you are going to struggle to make them worth it. Yeah, there's... The one benefit for here is they also do have access to the multi melta, which again is very expensive. But one of the well, I guess it, the sons of Horus have an access have access to a multi melta. Right. Yeah. However, those guys are two wounds. They have weapon skill five, just like the dominators, which is the only other thing you get for them aside from you know normal terminators. 
You got the cost of the Thunder Hammer baked in. They're stuck in Cataphracty armor. They have weapon skill five. They're stubborn, which is good. But again, so are the... Um, why the name for the Sons of Horus? Just Aaron? Just Aaron. That's it. Uh, the Just Aaron have two wounds. They can take basically the exact same lineup. Uh, and mean, they're 255. Yeah. And they two are Two wounds, just, five up. They don't have stubborn. And the difference being these guys, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue there. Seed to Terra spoilers. But the thing here is, like, first off, a heavy flamer. Why even bother giving that to them as an option? They're in cataphracty armor. They're going to get to fire it maybe once because you can't use it in Overwatch. Uh, the Reaper auto cannon is pretty normal. Multi melt is super expensive. It's like almost, you know, three fourths of another dude. Free swap to chain fist is nice. So you can like 50 50 them. Um, combi weapons the same as a normal terminator they needed something else so what about econ economies of scale here because i don't yeah. run terminators so we know we, you said they're like what 50 some points more expensive than correct regular terminators yeah, standard. Get out the same way mm -hmm. but in a 10 pack what's what's the what's the cost difference oh. um it wouldn't be a difference because a terminator a legion terminator is worth 30 points mm -hmm. extra. And then and 10 the, for the Thunder Hammer? Yeah, so it's 40 points. Uh, so oh, exactly. suddenly that's... Ah, I see what you're saying. If you go with 10 like, of these guys, Yeah, if suddenly, you go with 10 versus 10 for a 40-point difference. And you got 10 guys with Weapon Skill 5, mm -hmm. Stubborn, mm -hmm. Hatred, Cybernetica. Right, so then it is only... It's still a 50-point difference, but you do get a lot of bonuses. Yeah. <sighs> They would be way better with preferred enemy cybernetica cortex. I would agree with that. I yeah. will admit hatred is way more fluffy. Hatred is more fluffy. And like like you mentioned in, in our chat, it doesn't matter a great deal. Cause, well, it does actually, because preferred enemy and hatred function completely differently. It's why, um, you remember there are two rights of war specifically for... Uh, splinter factions of legions of a different alignment mm -hmm. than their yeah. parent legion was it uh sons of betrayal and outcast uh i, I know what you're talking about i can't yeah. remember the name but all right so the loyalist version like uh a loyalist splinter faction of an otherwise traitor legion is markedly worse than uh outcast sons outcast sons is awesome because in a challenge the character in the challenge gets preferred enemy uh, against the dude he's fighting. Preferred enemy transfers to the rest of the unit, which means the entire rest of the unit gets preferred enemy against the entirety of the enemy unit. Because it's not considered a separate unit in a challenge. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, exact same reason if you have like, um, I use it, I uh, have a lot of experience with it comparatively, um, preferred enemy characters on the Majos Malagra. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're shooting at any unit or in combat with any unit with a character in it, including like a squad sergeant, you get preferred enemy on the whole unit regardless. It's real nice. But hatred does not function the same way. Now, when they say cybernetica cortex, I know there was a little confusion at first, like especially for me too, it took me a second. They don't mean like cortex controller, like a magos or a tech priest. Or pravian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or yeah. pravian. Uh, they mean specifically automata. Um, so Castellax, Domitar, Arlatax, Thanatar, not Thalax, which is an important distinction. They're cyborgs, not automata, um, just so we're clear. But so against those things, you'll be rerolling miss to hits in the first round of combat. The big issue they're going to run into fighting those exact units, which again, I think is pretty fluffy because the point here is they got replaced because they were not as good as robots, which <laughs> I mean, of course, I mean, that's obvious, but um, the problem is they're all equipped with thunder hammers. You don't have an option to equip them with anything, but for combat, uh, all of those robots swing before them and they'll ignore their Terminator armor. Ugh. Like Castellax, each one gets at minimum two strength six hits with AP2 because it's a monstrous creature. Uh, same thing with Vorax. You've got strength six hits, AP2. A Thanatar, 
Strength 8, AP2, an Arl Atax, was made to kill expensive units like this. Um, and it's just never going to work out in the Dominator's favor when fighting the only unit they are basically, well, not made to fight because, again, they got replaced by robots. <laughs> but, like, their one niche thing they're going to kind of struggle with because, yes. So what you're telling me is take 10 of these guys. I mean, yeah, because if you really <laughs> want to make these dudes work, you're against like fighting robots. You're going to have to make sure that you can get a couple blows in. Yeah, because you will like, you know, you've got that 50 50 fallback. Uh, robots are probably going to be hitting you on fours because your weapon skill five. Um, the most robots are weapon skill three or four. Uh, you will be hitting on threes and fours, though, if you're a Thunderhammer, mm -hmm. if Correct. not more. So you will be hitting on threes. You'll be wounding on either twos or threes, depending. Still uh, pretty good with yeah. AP2 and concussion. Mm. Correct. And, and that concussion just, will be nice because it's a robot that will probably live through a round. Oh, yeah. But, too, then you're going to have to worry about surviving to get that swing. Because the robots are all going to strike before you. They're AP2 at initiative because they're all monstrous creatures. Mm -hmm. And yes, like the 50-50... Um, oh my gosh, I keep wanting to call it a ward save. I've been playing fantasy. <laughs> uh, you are going to get that 50-50 for the cataphracty and vulnerable save. But I don't think that's going to tip the balance enough to make them worth it. Yeah, so when actually when I said it doesn't really matter, that was more to the point that as you said, this only affects four units in the game. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Not the Thousand Suns robots, funnily enough, because uh, they have like, I don't know, wacky. Demons. Demons is the ant. Blasphemies. Uh, instead of computers, they have like, I don't know, like yoga crystals. Like. <laughs> yeah. Instead. Mango uh, scoop. <laughs> right. Uh, so they specifically don't have a cybernetic cortex. Uh, despite being magic robots, uh, just another reason they are flat out better in almost every way <laughs> than stock Castellax. But the interesting thing here is, okay, so we we know they're not particularly well designed to fight the big heavy robots, which again, Correct. I think is a fluff thing, not GW being bad at rules design. Oh yeah, no, I don't think they're bad at um, rules. I think they're perfect for what uh, they're supposed to be fluff wise. But what's interesting is this unit of Terminators who, as we've established, in, in, a pot, in a pot of 10, yeah. not really more expensive than a regular squad of Terminators. 50 points, 50 points more. Big whoop. You, you do have some advantages over them. How do they stack up against other bodyguard Terminator units? Not great. Not great? Even with the Thunderhammers? Oh, yeah. Especially with the Thunderhammers. Because <laughs> um, almost every other like unique Terminator unit is either going to be less points, they are going to have two wounds to the Thunderhammers. That doesn't the, matter because they're fighting with Thunderhammers. Correct. Or um, it'll be something like Red Butchers that will just get so many more attacks than them, they'll just mutually implode, which, I mean, admittedly, Red Butchers just do that anyway. So nothing wrong with a good mutual implosion. I run Death Sworn. <laughs> But I guess uh, my thought my thought process is that could be another fluff move is that they do have thunder hammers they are weapon skill 5 mm -hmm. and they're stubborn which against like an equal number of enemy terminators is going to get the job I mean like I you said mutual implosion is the most likely result but I feel compared to a standard legion terminator squadron the 50 extra points for a 10 man squadron I think is a fair and reasonably priced compared to a Legion Terminator yeah. squad. But and like I mean, that stubborn is real good. In stubborn a, in enough a, and skill five. In a fair fight, stubborn is what's going to win. All right. Counterpoint that. Compare okay. them to the Huskarls. And God, I hate to say this, but <laughs> the Imperial Fists, I think, uh, come out on top in this direct comparison. Because I think a good comparison is the Huskarls that we got in the exemplary battle yeah. a few weeks back from okay. the Imperial okay. Fists. So they're the exact same point cost at 275. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not all characters, I will admit. Um, it's an HQ unit, too. They come with the Vigil Pattern Storm Shields and whatever flavor power weapon you want. So three up in Vuln and mm -hmm. power right. weapon. So uh, they 
are also stuck in Cataphracty. Uh, they come with a teleportation transponder, which is nice. Uh, they get stubborn. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. They get shield wall. So it's the exact same thing that the phalanx wardens have mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. with at least three units remaining. Um, t- 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 uh, gains a base bonus a plus one weapon skill in any turn the unit has been charged by the enemy. Uh, friendly models also get it as long as three models with shield wall remain. So they turn into weapon skill six or five? Uh, let's see. Would be weapon skill six. Mm. Wow. So they are almost flat out better across the board. They can also um, exchange any of their power weapons for solarite power gauntlets for 10 points. And those are just better than power fists. Well, that's when you take the tyrant siege terminators and just shoot them from far out. I think tyrants are just... That's another 100 points up on the squad then? Yeah. To get them the solarite? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they've got the they've got the friggin' three up invul save, which would be the difference maker here, really. Definitely on top of shield wall. I mean, it's kind of blipping out the one advantage the dominators have against other terminators that aren't unique from like weapon skill five. But if we're talking about bodyguard terminators too, you compare them to something like death shroud would just massacre dominators because Aww. they get. Reaping blow and they get initiative three AP two at what strength five. I mean, Death Shroud are real good. And they are. They are. <laughs> they are true. just going to motor through dominators like they weren't even there. Well, Iron Warriors fans, I tried. <sighs> I need to see how they stack up with a regular uh, Terminator command squadron now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I really am sad. I eh. Now, because I was pretty happy. Like overall, though, I still think think they're a fun unit. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean they're certainly not not bad. Like for the points, they're not bad, especially if you are bringing that ten man squad of them. Like Mm -hmm. they're a fun, fluffy option, and uh, they will certainly get the job. And they're also an elite choice, which I like. Where some of these bodyguard units are HQ slots that could be better taken with HQs. I don't want to do all this math. I know it's. Terminator Barty Guards. That's why I'm just sitting here. I'm I'm drinking a, <laughs> a polliner and not doing math. All right, so there's fi- uh, Oh, Legion Command Squad. I forgot there's only three guys. Yeah. Mm. Starting out. Wild. That's 75 points. Give them all Terminator armor. Suddenly that's uh, an extra 15 points each. So that's uh, 30, 45 points each. To upgrade 15 points Plus 15 points for uh, another legionary. So it's 30 points to make a Terminator. Uh, their Thunder Hammers are 15 points a pop. Mm-hmm. But also they're not restricted to any of the Terminator armors specifically. You say that like it's a bad thing. I mm-hmm. like Cataphracty. No, is, I, Cataphracty is the way I go. Is what, I, is what I'm do. in. Because a five up save is not a save at all. Unless it's a feel no pain. Unless you're Imperial Militia. Oh, but... I mean, while we're kind of on it, too, they are markedly worse than Atramentar. Just, like, not even in the same ballpark. Okay, okay. These are free rules, Jason. These are free rules. raining on our parade. (laughs) I'm just saying, like, out of the three unique Terminators we've gotten so far, definitely, uh... Well, I guess for all the time we've spent shitting on Dorne, the Iron Warriors had to come off worse eventually. I guess it is appropriate. They're Iron Warriors. They're kind of digging for the bottom. So. Playing for third. So what you're saying is it is an excellent narrative unit. It really is. This is a brilliant narrative unit because, again, not bad. It gets the job done. Mm -hmm. And literally no one will accuse you of power gaming. Oh, yeah. Very true. But you don't get headsman's axes, which... I mean, you get a whole squad of thunder hammers. Yeah, but who doesn't? I mean, not base. (laughs) True. (laughs) Well, we'll leave this with a little quote from the story. They charged the Castellax with a fury born of resentment and shame, venting their frustration of their fall from their Primarch side on the battle automata that so closely resembled the iron circle that had replaced them. Racist against robots. And that's why they were replaced. All robots look alike. <laughs> they stole our germs. My germs. Anyway. Well, we tried. 
I was coming to that so happy. and I was excited. Damn you, Jason, with your <laughs> math and facts. All those books. <laughs> it's all this book learning. My bad. <laughs> My book bad. learning ain't for gentlemen. I still might, I still might rock one because just get a whole bunch of uh, thunder hammers and I can just say, oh, no, no, these are regular Legion <laughs> Terminators. I get this a lot of work, too. I got to introduce like research articles to people. It's like, hey, you thought we were doing better, but I have math that says we aren't. Sorry. Aww. Okay. <laughs> uh, Such is the troubles of our times. We shouldn't All be happy. All these goddamn scientists telling us how fucked we are. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, we're worse off. I have math to prove it. It's like, it doesn't make me happier, Jason. <laughs> All right, so but this will make you happier, yes, dear listeners, because this was a lot of fun in the White Dwarf issue four sixty nine, which I have right here, Austin. If you want a hard copy to flip through, nice. On page one twenty, we finally have a Horus Heresy article. That God damn, it's been way too long since we've had one. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. good stuff. Armor through the ages: an assayance of the issue and utilization of Legionis Astartes power armor throughout the Age of Darkness. So. Basically, if you probably already know this, it's a uh, article that goes through marks one through six, comma sp- seven, and comma the lost imperial armor. Mm-hmm. Actually, te- technically eight marks of armor then, because it also does yeah. ma- uh, mention mark seven quite a bit. Oh, it does? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a couple of days since I actually picked it up, so I, guess I, I literally get to read it all over again. Read it right before coming over. Gotcha, here. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> So hitting up some aid points here. Uh, first off, go ahead, go ahead, Jason. Uh, so we we're talking about this a little bit before we started recording. Something that made me super happy. I feel like somebody at Games Workshop was like writing this, and they were just as sick of people online like complaining about like, uh, d- that that's cool, but like your your Legion didn't have that armor mark at that point in the heresy. I feel like it's almost. I remember those fan-made charts. That oh showed. my god, those stupid! This is charts. your legion. This is the armors you can take. I've got. This is what you're allowed I've to have. yelled so much at those people. So it took me a couple times to read through this, but I love how not only did they talk about how every legion essentially had access to every mark of armor, mm-hmm. you know, as the heresy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the last line under the font of the machine god in that first paragraph. As the heresy progressed, new iterations and classes of war machines, weapons, and other devices would enter service on one side, only to appear in the ranks of the opposing side soon afterward, a fact that often surprises many who would study the era. <laughs> Kapow! Shot right over the bow of rivet counters everywhere. It wasn't over the bow, it was just straight to the forehead. <laughs> like, fucking nerds! Let people like things. Yes. Which I realize is kind of ironic and a little hypocritical coming from the shitting I just did on <laughs> Iron Warrior's Dominator. Right? Um, My but, bad. But yeah, I super like this. And it all, one, I like it because it's a lot of the exact same arguments I would use on people on the internet when they're like, the, but but Space Wolves wouldn't have Mark IV, et cetera. Like really just insert any Legion and at least one Mark of Armor, right? Um is that one, there were piles of them. Of literally every mark, there were piles of them. Cities of them. So this <laughs> that's, article that's informs the direct us. Quote. But when there are piles of stuff in a civil war, what happens is the other guy will on occasion take your pile of stuff. That's just what happens. They will grab your shit, y'all. So they will grab your shit, <laughs> spray paint it, and use it. It's and then, theirs now. And that is exactly what they talk about here. Uh, They also hit on another super interesting fact um, that I admit isn't an argument that I would make. I was very much on the like, it's a goddamn intergalactic war. Like you raid one transport and suddenly you can equip six companies with whatever Mark happened to be on that boat. Mm. Um, But they talk a lot, especially I think in like the Mark V section. Yeah, we're just blasting um, through this thing. Yeah, or actually maybe earlier on. Um, oh, yeah, no, right there in Font of the Machine God about how there was essentially a full-on cyber warfare yeah. just all the goddamn time. Just hacker battles. Which, of course, there was yeah. because obviously 
but it's not something that we think about really. Right. It's just like, yeah, man, we're just fucking hacking everybody's forge world and just jacking all their secrets. And uh, they, they even mention at one point, like, oh yeah, you know, somebody would develop a thing and like, this is going to be the wonder upgrade to win the war. And like, before they even get it through their production cycle, the other guy has stolen it and like fielded patterns. And that's what you get for instituting like unregulated internet capitalism. Right. Just fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what, what was it that you mentioned Jason earlier? Oh, it's hard to tell. It was the last part. Uh, it was another mention in the Fauna Machine God, how they would send out, uh, what did they call oh, it? What was it? Uh, using fatal kill codes and forbidden murder metrics, <laughs> combatants separated in distance by thousands of light years visited savage atrocity upon one another's minds, infiltrating systems and corrupting nerve pathways. Most importantly, breaking the great data seals placed upon the enemy's high altar so as to plunder the resources beyond. What is pi times I'm in. infinity? There we go. We got it, boys. Like, where's, where's my visor? My fucking <laughs> DOS prompt of just flowing script. We definitely need some more stories, though, of just of just a mechanicum cyber war. Right. We know the story of how um, Coriel Zeth developed Wi-Fi. Yeah. I want to know how MS DOS in the future came about. There's a command prompt somewhere in some like just tiny backwater space hulk. I want to know how it got there. <laughs> I want that one useless story. Actually, I think this this would be a great story for um that assassin clade. Oh, right. The info sites that was in literally just that one book that nobody really likes about and, the assassins. Right. Even Clan Venenum got like mentions outside of that one book. Yeah. It's just like this, this guy's just a nerd. Why, why would you need a super, sk this is why. <laughs> That's why. Like humans could even start to keep up with the Mechanicum. Right. Another little segment they have in here is talking about the bolt gun, which I really appreciated. Uh, this Especially the last part. Again, yeah, despite these broad alignments of development and supply, because they mentioned that certain marks were developed alongside other marks of armor, there existed no formal regulations prescribing that certain marks of armor be combined with certain marks of bolter, or indeed any other item of war gear. Go fucking wild! Do what Go you in. want. Shit. Let people like things. <laughs> yes, because again, it's a civil war. And when you're in a civil war, you use whatever comes to hand. Like you said, the Horus Heresy was a time of chaos and anarchy where brother fought brother with whatever weapons were literally on hand yep. or to hand. They're the, to hand. I, I really love. Oh, yeah. Uh, not not to like vanish away from the bolter stuff. Oh, no, but no, I'm, no. I saw the, the Thunder Warrior, the Thunder Armor. And it's like, yeah, you know, Thunder Armor. Uh, you know, that was kind of a black shield thing, like kind of whatever you can yeah. find. Everybody knows it's not as good as the other marks, but you know, the black shields, they may do with what you want. Uh, they were also ceremonial. Yeah. Looking at you, Kalf, <laughs> just like every happy moment, like just fuck you guys. <laughs> um, but also this, this like gave in my head, you know, that Legion unit on some fucking backwater rock. You know, they know mm -hmm. the heresy has happened, but, you know, they can't really get anywhere. They're just yeah. sort of holding the fort. And all of a sudden, they just see that massive enemy fleet and just a mental image of, like, whatever freaking company captain is there being like, fuck it. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die well-dressed and just throwing on the Mark One and going for That's it. That's pretty sick. One thing I really like, too, over on the uh, Mark Five page. So... Not only, I know there's always some dude that's like, uh, Mark V isn't an actual pattern. Oh yeah, this is fun. That one dude is always on like every, just. He's always wrong. Yeah, he Actually. is. Actually. And they, oh God, I hate that guy. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like how they explain in exhaustive detail, like, yes, it was a production mark, but yes, it also was just whatever cobbled together crap that they just happened to talk about at the time. That's why it's the heresy armor. So, and it's neat too, because they explain specifically, um, it's different elements, some that aren't even in production yet, 
So the legs and lower body are based on Mark IV. Uh, the midline and torso are from Mark VI. It actually uses the gauntlets and like the wrist seals from prototype Mark so, VII. Yeah, yeah. That is neat as hell. Mm -hmm. It's got design elements cobbled together from everything in the production Mark V. They lost a couple engineers mm -hmm. to bolt rounds. Like, oh, well, he was working on this. <laughs> But it's also fun. It's like the Mark Seven, obviously, like yeah. the prototype Mark Seven stuff. But the arms and wrist seals, like, did did that just get through quality control first? Like, is that somehow hey. the easiest hey. part of <laughs> when the yes. glove fits? Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Look at him go. He's here all night. <laughs> Literally, uh, this is my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But yeah, no, that's just kind of like the the logistics nerd. Part of me is like, man, I wonder if, like, why? Yeah. I do like the uh, the quote that the other type, quote, non-production Mark V, is a genuine amalgamation of field modifications combining several different marks of armor in ways no tech priest would ever think to sanction. <laughs> right. Just <laughs> don't, don't try this at home, kids. True heresy armor. True heresy armor. Mm -hmm. Literally, figuratively, electronically. And spiritually, probably, if you're a certain yeah. parts of the Mechanicum. Oh, yeah, definitely. Berserkers. It is. Oh, yeah, popular amongst uh, Berserkers, the Mark V. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I do like that they specifically call out in Mark IV. Uh, t -t 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 hang on, let me find it. Um, oh, the Thousand Suns Legion, however, appears to have adopted the Mark later in the Horus Heresy, though how and why remains beyond our ken at the time of the study. In the years after the war, the Thousand Suns would manifest the dreadful Rubric Marines, who, according to accounts, appear to be almost universally equipped with a highly ornamented variantation of Maximus armor, making the Mark now synonymous with the Sons of Magnus the Red. The Warhammer 40k Rubric Marine set, of which yeah. I have exhaustive experience with now— um, Mark IV based. Yeah, it's yeah. based on Mark IV. You can literally line up the plastic Mark IV from the Betrayal at Kalth yeah. set with the Rubric Marines, and it fits like one to one. So good. Yeah, and they do the same thing with the Mark III and Plague Marines. Right. Which, again, yes, like you can just see it in the 40K models. And at the very last couple of lines on... um. Mark V, uh, likely due to the relentless pace of operations, one legion in particular made especially heavy use of Mark V towards the end of the war, the world leaders. Of all the traitor legions, the sons of Angron were committed time and time again to the most high-intensity assaults, and so the legion's tech marines and attached mechanicum adepts were forever forced to make do with the armor components at hand, especially once the world leaders' ranks began to be rapidly replenished with those referred to by some sources as inducti. Indeed, so prevalent was the use of the Mark V armor amongst such warriors, the legion's red-clad berserkers, dedicated wholly to the so-called blood god, would use it almost exclusively in the wars of the scour and beyond i want new berserkers yeah. in mark V. I see them on the horizon right, right? yeah it's only a matter of time at this point mm -hmm. yeah and i will say again this is like the history nerd in me um but when they're talking about the mark six right right so towards the end of the Horus Heresy, Mark VI was in wide use throughout almost every legion, for both sides were in possession of the imprints, and Forge Worlds allied to both Terra and the Warmaster were able to produce it in large quantities. In the main, it was those legions in direct contact with a functioning supply chain that received the largest numbers of Mark VI suits, while individual units separated from reliable supply lines by distance or circumstance was forced to rely on the Urzat's Mark V. <laughs> By the time of the Siege of Terra, however, when the supply lines of most of the participants have been reestablished, Mark VI was the most numerous pattern in service, and this would continue well into the scouring and the present age. Which makes I, sense that we got a bunch of Mark VI coming our right? way. Not only is there obviously some Mark VI in that box, but it also plays out kind of how real civil wars tend to do. Because yeah. everybody uh, – you sort of have that instinct that like, all right – it's a civil war, and as the war goes on, things get shittier and less standardized mm -hmm. as everybody's just sort of going balls to the wall trying to win. But that's not what happens. Um, for example, to do like history nerd yeah, segue. Yeah. Um, By all means. In the American Civil War, 
uh, the Confederates start out with fucking nothing at all, right? Sure. They, they can't get their shit together. Everything's sort of a mess. And you kind of have that image of like the ragtag Confederate soldier mm-hmm. and like homemade stuff and yeah. yada, yada, yada. And as the war goes on, you always hear like, oh, well, there was a blockade and this and that and the other thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, but just like by virtue of having more time to get their shit together, the army actually gets more homogenous mm-hmm. as the war continues, mm-hmm. even with everything falling to shit. Uh and that's kind of what they're saying here with the Mark VI is, you know, hey, the the heresy starts and it's sort of random, you know, box yeah. of heresy all over the goddamn place. Nobody has anything together. The traitors, because they're just not together, and the loyalists, because suddenly there's traitors everywhere. But by the time you get the Siege of Terra, there are very obvious, like, everybody's beaten down the brush fires. Yeah. And it's just the main traitor blocks and yeah. the main loyalist blocks. The flashbangs have worn off at this point. Yeah. Starting like, oh, okay. oh, hey, you know, there was six traitor planets among these 20 loyalist planets at the start of the war. That fucks everything up. Hmm. 14 years later, those six planets are gone. <laughs> <laughs> and the loyalists have kind of rerouted everything around them, uh, which means they can, they can do this, right? They can start saying, ah, yes, we're, you know, it might be the end of the road for us, um, but the mail comes on time again, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought that was a really a really uh, neat touch. Um, so for those of you that are like, oh, well, they're just saying that because the new box set's got Mark Sick. No, historically accurate. <laughs> it happens this way. I promise. Yep, they also call out the, uh, the cacophony in Mark Six, which I have to take a look at the uh, 40K cacophony. Yeah, I admit I haven't really taken a look at those guys, um, so I, I couldn't I couldn't compare. Hmm. Uh, much like the corn berserkers, they are six million years old. Ah, oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so Horace Heresy ones there, and uh, I guess they're called Noise Marines. Duh! Not, I was looking for cacophony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah, cacophony are Mark, Mark Four, four right? Yeah, because yeah. mm. that's supposed to be like the Istvan yeah. uh, cacophony. Um, and then there's another fun fact. Um, right at the very end, the little sub, little paragraph, Terra and Beyond, uh, that talks about the Aquila armor, which is the Mark VII, which is the most prevalent uh, marine armor pre-rift in the 41st millennium. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a Mark VIII that was sort of a couple of centuries old, I think, by the time, like, you know, 999 M41 rolled around. Um, but it wasn't, it hadn't replaced 7 as a production model. Yeah. Um, 7 just kind of was it. And here, uh, it says, hey, you know, there were, the Mark 7 was in development in the last few years for the outbreak of the heresy, somewhat similar to the Mark 6. Um, but, yeah. It wasn't really much more than experimental armor, um, but it was around in the siege. Like there were some of those getting uh, parceled out everywhere, uh, which is fun. And then, of course, in the aftermath of the heresy, everybody, like pretty much all the loyalists re-equip with that. The traitors are doing their traitor thing at that point. And, you know, they've already got demons in their Mark V, so why bother upgrading? (laughs) Um, But... It's fun. And once again, me and I'm, sh- I'm sure plenty of other people, um, when I have like a Sergeant and Artificer armor, I'd mix. It's generally just bits of Mark 7 mm. or Mark 8, you know, the kind of later marks yeah. with the three and four armors, uh, depending on what squad I'm building to do like the fancy Artificer armor. And that gets kind of borne out in all of this, really. But it's interesting that they mention Mark 7 at all. Mm. Um, because, hey, like this box set's supposed to be Siege of Terra. There's not yeah. – it's supposed to be a flagship game and you're going to Siege of Terra. So like are you going to sit in the heresy for the next five years or are gonna... you going to go like reach forward into the scouring? Um, I even had – Yeah, they do mention the scouring in here. And um, who knows? Maybe at some point they're – Going to make the firstborn into a Horus Heresy line, maybe. Yeah, like we, we talked potential. about that is, you know, hey, they've got all those models and all those sculpts. And they're definitely older, though. I, I'd, it'd be a hard 
sell, I think. But I don't think... Maybe. I don't know. From a like... It's been a while since I bought an actual thing of Mark Seven Space Marines. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Um, oh, speaking of which, um, something fun that I just realized is reinforced by this Mark V deal, uh, how they're explaining the gauntlets and wrist seals are, you know, kind of prototype Mark Seven. Uh it's something I never understood. You know, one of the big deals people complained about with the plastic heresy line is like, oh, you only get like two sets of like close combat arms. Use Mark Seven assault marine arms. Nobody will tell mm. the difference, and it looks great. So, That's as somebody idea. with a pile of death sworn, many of whom have Mark Seven close combat arms, yep, yep, nobody has seen the difference yet. <laughs> my entire white scars and thousand suns armies both who are predominantly close combat based all have mark seven arms no complaints no notices yeah not even notices. complaints just nobody notices <laughs> like yeah it's almost like people only care about that dumb shit on the internet where they can't count the rivets right right can't count the rivets. Yeah, tell it to my death swarm, bro. They'll ax you to death eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I mentioned, uh, or I saw rather, in the Mark VI area, in the little blurb underneath the kick ass Raven Guard, as it mentions, by the eve of the Siege of Terra, Mark VI was the predominant pattern used by all legions, especially among newly raised, quote, inductee formations. Yeah, and I'm wondering if that is an allusion to something we might see in the future, where there might be inductee tactical marines, and they, then we have veteran tactical marines, almost like a uh, a white shield. <laughs> no, I, I I was thinking, um, flame. What's it? Flames of War? Oh, what's that World Warlord Games game? The the World War Two one. Bolt action. Bolt action. God damn! I just really. I mean, also Flames there. of War, but yeah. presumably you want bolt action, the 28 mil version. Yeah. Which would be interesting. Like, you pay an extra couple points to increase the stat line of a Marine. I don't know. Well, they have made it pretty clear. You know, like 50 points and get a weapon skill (laughs) 5. They have made it pretty clear in the Siege of Terror books, and this is giving away no spoilers, um, that those sort of new blood guys, you know, pretty much any Marine that that has only fought the heresy, just isn't as good yeah. as a normal Marine. Um, I've, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to not name the Legion mainly because I don't remember. Um, but there's a great moment where a traitor. Sons of Horus. Oh, that's all right. Sure. Um, I'll where, that. where a brand new, you know, son of Horus is like, man, I, I was raised to be a badass and God, <laughs> now I'm kicking ass and beating the crap out of the emperor and I'm going to go. And, you know, he's reaving some solar auxilia and some mortals. And like, ah, I've been kicking ass for so long. This is great. And then he runs across a loyalist that has crusade honors, you know, somebody that's been <laughs> around for a while and just murdered. It's a good scene. Just murdered so it. hard. Um, Now, granted, that's not, Everybody, uh, the White Scars, again, not not giving away spoilers, um, but they seem to have a few like that, too, that are like, oh, man, it's the heresy. We're just recruiting from anywhere because, fuck, we need the bodies. Some of them seem a little better than that son of Horus. Yeah. Um, but also, he is gets more than a chapter, so <laughs> he wasn't just a throwaway <laughs> mook. Um, but it makes good sense, right? Like, have you been fighting for two centuries and went through the whole training program? Yeah, great. Uh, you went through 50 years and had the whole training program? Great. Never seen a Xenos race before? You've never shot an orc and were in like the six-month accelerated course? Which is funny because eh. throughout the heresy, they made it seem like Marine against Marine is the ultimate combat. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that there are plenty of different types of uh, challenges out there that the Space Marines were like, oh, fuck, yeah, i.e. Like murder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like any mm-hmm. any... Marine equivalent, you know, any captain versus captain, any tactical versus tactical is just as fair a fight as you can possibly get. Sure. Uh, but then you find these inductee guys and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, this is what happens when you <laughs> when you skip a grade, right? Yeah. But the idea of a inductee units in the game would be kind of neat. Mm-hmm. I can dig that. 
Yeah, I I would enjoy it. Cheap bodies. Mm-hmm. GW makes uh, more models and sells more models, <laughs> and I just get waves and waves of Space Marine just dying to bolter and pistol. I mean, it would also, you know, if rumor is to be believed, and those photo comparisons that people have painstakingly done on the internet yeah. are to be believed, the Mark VI guys are bigger. They're kind of the new Chaos Marine size. So they're not maybe not noticeable, you know, across the table from each other, but you wouldn't really want to mix squads, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you do take this inductee thing to heart, you could run something like, hey, you know, one, Marines are all different sizes anyway. They vary between 8 and 12 feet. That, God, and that's a whole other, that's a whole, that's a whole other soapbox I could get yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, you could use that as a way to say like, oh yeah, you know, hey, those guys in Mark Six, you know, through all the accelerated stuff, they're just pumping them full of as many hormones as they could get. And like, yeah, some of them exploded uh, and it's not good, but it was the heresy and you needed to pop out 50,000 additional Marines in six months. So they're all bigger than normal. <laughs> or conversely, you could go, hey, they were accelerated program. We, you know, they didn't get the full 12 meals a day because mm-hmm. they had to be packed on from one ship to another, <laughs> you know, three feet ahead of the invasion armada. Uh, so they are a little smaller than, you know, they're like seven to you know, seven to nine instead of eight to 12 Yeah, uh, I, to give you an excuse for the scaling difference. I definitely don't foresee them doing an upscale of the previous heresy plastics. Honestly, I, I do. I, yeah? You think so? Well, I think, I think they will. Um, like uh, assuming of course that the, the Mark seven is chaos Marine size. Sure. I think we will see an upscaling of the, at least the tactical Marines. Okay. Um, because again, the rumor says, Hey, this is going to be GW's flagship game, like third flagship mm-hmm. system. Awesome. Uh, Age of Sigmar, 40 K yeah, Age of Sigmar, 40 K heresy. Fuck. Um, and if you're wow. doing that, <laughs> then that, like it really would just sort of need to happen. Sure. Maybe you don't see a full like, oh, here's a box of Mark Three, here's a box of Mark Four. Maybe it's something more along the lines of the current regular Marine box of like, all right, you can get a box. It's pure Mark Six because that's the most popular. That yeah. was, you know, siege scouring. That was the most prevalent armor, and you can buy like a Crusade era box that's you know. Four Mark IV and four Mark Three and a couple mm. of Mark II helms and a couple of Mark V. That's interesting. Well, I mean, it's kind of along the lines of what Forge World already did with their resin marines. Just starting out in the Horus Heresy. Yeah, um, you can only buy five marines at a time, couldn't you? Yeah, but mm-hmm. um, those dudes from the very beginning, good Lord, it's like, what, 10 years ago now? Uh, when you'd order them from Forge World's website, they were markedly smaller than yeah. plastic tactical marines. Mm-hmm. Like to the point, like you could not use. I just remember True. a lot of them weren't. Yeah, they weren't very compatible with the plastics. Yeah, yeah, they were not. Those old uh, Mark IV resin helmets. They were like <laughs> look yeah. weird and squished Thin. and slim when you put them on like a plastic marine body or a plastic uh, weapon hand. Yeah, you put on there. It's like oh. It's like bigger than the wrist. Like Mickey Mouse. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But they just kind of quietly upscaled them to the quote unquote legion pattern, Mark IV, Mark V, Mark VI, to kind of bring them closer to what the plastic uh, Mark IV and Mark Mm -hmm. Three, three are the words I was looking for. Here for you. I appreciate that. It's going to be interesting. Looking forward to it. Me too. I'd be looking forward to it more if it was Christmas, but yeah. Be, yeah. When, yeah. Once again, we we reset our reset our hopes and pray we're wrong. <laughs> well, what are historic war gamers if not patient? True, we've made it this far, mm. right? Mm. That's a few more That's months. True. I've made it this far without playing Ninth Edition. <laughs> I'll make it another six months. I'm not starting yeah. now. <laughs> uh, Lord Almighty. Nah. But yeah. That being said, we got Kill Team too, so. Yeah, I do like Kill Team, but I, I really did, like, of all the the heresy, you know, stuff that's come out, mm-hmm. honestly, I'd say in the last five years, like, as far as, ha-ha, fuck yeah. you, the internet, this is the best thing I've read. Right. It's a really fun article. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, have, if you haven't picked it up, four sixty nine. Yeah, a, yeah, pretty it, good. It's good stuff. And again, like just the stupid basic. Yeah, hey, the Phobos pattern comes with Mark three, but obviously a guy in Corvus would use one because it's a gun uh, that shoots. Incom- it doesn't match my like, armor. <laughs> The finger still fits in the trigger guard, yeah. so he'll still pull that trigger. The only thing that would have made that more perfect would be a Godwin pattern bolter in that little blurb, too. God, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> that would be pretty <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, before we before we finish that up, there was that blurb about the uh, Imperial armor. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, can't, we can't miss that. The Lost Mark. It's under the Mark III. It is with sound reason that the Age of Darkness is named thus. So intense and all-consuming was the conflict that in many cases accurate accounts of all that transpired are all but lost. The witnesses, along with the physical relics themselves, a rogue trader box sets, not but drifting <laughs> ashes and burnt remains. Or $300 on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and covered in eight layers of somebody's acrylic paints. Mm. There are those of our order who now who even now claim that the marks of Legionotus Astartes' power armor that saw service during the Horse Heresy were not the only ones that were worn. Incomplete histories speak of other marks, suits which must sur- yeah, suits which must surely have been experimental during the Great Crusade, and all were but lost even as the heresy unfolded. Most notable of these is a class referenced in but a handful of sources by the name of Imperial Pattern Power Armor. This mark is described as a highly idiosyncratic design notable for a helmet not unlike that of a much later Mark VI, for a distinctly archaic arrangement of vents and joints, and for lacking the flared greaves so distinctive of the known classes. In these sources, the wearers of this class also bear a singular weapon thought to be related to the almost obsolete Volkite, some manner of disintegration beamer now entirely lost to our age. What other wonders we have lost to the chaos of the Age of Darkness may never be known to us, such was the calamity of those times through which we have suffered. I do love how this was written in a uh, first-person perspective to the whole article. Yeah. Yeah, it's very reminiscent to the fluff and the, the black books, mm-hmm. which I do love. Also, weirdly, uh, this, this second paragraph here mm. is a wedge in which 3D-designed Space oh. Knights... <laughs> uh, suddenly find themselves with the potential to be, Uh-oh. from a fluff perspective, yeah. heresy legal. Because it doesn't say mark of armor, it's marks, plural. Yep. plural. That there are multiple designs mm-hmm. that were probably around during the heresy. Mm. Um, so yeah, if you've got your Space Crusader Knight on a go faster, you know, or like angry magic space knight or whatever you happen to have, you know, Edward's boys in armor of power. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. But the naming conventions to like dive under the GW radar are spectacular. My favorite so far has been a Conrad Kerr's analog called sad, angry Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, absolute prime <laughs> naming conventions. Well, They're really good. It's true. It's true. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm sure not. That, this isn't something GW intended. Yeah. But we have to acknowledge that. Uh, They're listening now like, shit. <laughs> fuck. It. Fire that author. <laughs> Rewrite. Oh. There's one very specific mark that may have been a special edition five to six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. It's good well, times. Yeah. Well, this was good. Like, Got a surprisingly amount, surprisingly large amount of heresy content there. Yeah, recently, which yeah, was a nice was, boost because I was and it did run empty it so out. hard, run run a little empty, and I think a lot of people, I mean myself included, a little bummed that the reveal was quote just the con. The con. Um, that being said, and like I know it, exemplary battle, a nice article on power armor, and suddenly I'm very excited again. Yeah, yep, yep. And for those of you that play Space Wolves, uh. White Dwarf 468, Mm -hmm. which came out after 469, um, (laughs) because, again, COVID is a cruel mistress, and Brexit 
has done wonders for literally nothing but the <laughs> U.S. to pound exchange rate. Uh, I don't think it's even that. Great. Well, it was good for a while. I don't know where it sits now. It's been a while. It's, but anyway, anyway. Um, has a wolf spear transfer sheet. Uh, for those of you that don't keep up with Space Wolves or 40K, uh, yeah. Space Wolves have successor chapters now. They were made out of the Primaris Marines, one of which is the Wolf Spears, which was like a, ho- a fan-made chapter uh, that GW liked well mm-hmm. enough to kind of – well, it the name was in a GW publication and some, some guys on the internet uh, – I'm totally blanking on who they are, so forgive me. Not <laughs> us. We had nothing to do with it, um, but just other excited nerds on the internet. Bless them. Uh, like, did iconography, wrote some background mm-hmm. fluff, all of this. GW really loved it. They got an index of Stardis in that white dwarf and a transfer sheet, which is delightful because mm-hmm. um, the the chapter symbol is two cross spears and kind of the standard space wolf face fronting wolf yeah. in white um but the sheet is full of interesting transfers yeah. that could very easily be 30k usable mm-hmm. um you know just more runes more kind of weird stuff yeah esoteric marks that yeah really would fit in them and they're they're great for like squad designators all that sort of stuff or even if you wanted to have your own fucking great company mm-hmm. <laughs> and run them with these decals it it would be a hundred percent like an okay thing. Like I'm, I'm seriously considering it myself. Yeah, remind me before you leave because I have that copy somewhere. So oh, delightful. So it is yeah, for you. I've got. Um, there's not a. There's a ton of like little decals, yeah. but as far as like equipping a squad with like chapter symbols, there's only ten. Uh, so that'll put me up to thirty. Somebody's phone. So, there you go. <laughs> Potential spam. Jesus wept. <laughs> Ruining our cast quality for... Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Can't come soon enough. But thanks again for listening to another episode of the Remembrancers Retreat. Once again, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at RR30K Podcast. Instagram at RR30K. You can follow our website at RR30K.com. Where you can find a list of all our podcasts, some homebrew Battlefleet gothic rules i don't know something about that as uh, that's a thing i hear thing. yeah <laughs> people like it's it's wild people are having events and everything it still blows my mind it's nuts yeah but you should be proud of that i am it's been fun and again if you uh really enjoy our program and would like to uh, support us go over to patreon.com forward slash rr30k podcast i think there's a link in the show notes here you can't possibly think that we would be the ones to know that and not you yeah, I was just uh, thinking out loud. All right. Because i am also been working on this white Russian stout, mm. and it's really good. El Dunarino. From, El Dunarino. Yeah, from Center of the Universe Brewery in Ashland, Virginia. I thought that patterning on the can looked familiar. Drink local. Once again, I'd like to thank all of our patrons, starting with our Legion Praetors, Alex Self, Chaplain Asar, Chris Mack, Jacob Dillon, the Garner Dot Tree of Woe, Joe from Music City Heresy, Luke Rizzuto, Matthew Boyce, Mr. Baldwick, Nicholas Quenga, Sar Luther, Taco Tuesday or Bus 22, Rock and Roll McDonald's, and What's Ligma? Heart Legion Centurions, Aaron Maynard, Andrew N., Angry Boy, Danny Larson, Dave Jones, Duncan, Ed, John Christensen, M. Tanzer, Gore Crow, Noah Atkins, Rena DeFloof, Scott LeMay. And our Legion Sergeants, Agrippina, Emily O'Hare, Garrett Lowe, Jay DeSales, Jay Grammaticus, Mr. Seer, Nick Gillen, The Zoy, and What Do I Call Myself? Y'all are all crazy. Thank you. We appreciate it. And that's everything I have. Uh, I just discovered something I feel like is very important. Yeah. Uh, is this breaking news? It might be. Hit the button. Hit the button. Mm-mm. Oh, that's, that's, that's not it. Uh, but, uh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you for that lead-in. <laughs> um, if you look really, really close by either zooming in or getting your face really close to the page <laughs> on that picture of the Raven Guard with Mark VI oh, armor. Oh, God. Oh, God. Does it say 12-25-21? Uh, it doesn't. God damn it. But if you look really, really close at the helmet... 
I think they're supposed to be reflections in his little red eye lenses, but it looks like a slitted lizard pupil, but it's off-centered on one side, so it looks like a lizard with a lazy eye. Once again, my name is Jesse. I'm here with the Emergency Street. <laughs> God damn it, it doesn't. Now I can't unsee it. Thanks. That's all Holy I see shit. now. God damn it. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's one of those demon Raven Guard. Oh. oh yeah. That okay. was that was good. I like that. That was a nice stereo. <laughs> my, name is, my name is Jesse. Thanks again for listening to the Remercer's Retreat. Uh, I've been Jason, and I'm sorry for everything. I'm still lost in that regret. Nothing! <laughs> we'll see you next time. Keep those dice rolling, and bye for now. Bye.